I'm going to start off this video by saying that there is no right or wrong way to go about journaling. I think it is lovely to refer to videos in terms of inspiration. What we are not going to do is make journaling a very stressful and anxious type of activity when in fact it should be the complete opposite. Your journal should be a safe place for you to look forward to filling in every single day. It should be a fun and joyful experience and I hope that by me talking a little bit about my kind of background and process with journaling and showing you a little bit of all the different types of journals out there it will help you better understand this fun little activity. I am very very excited to make this video. I feel like it's been long overdue because I talk about journaling in practically like all my videos. I like to say that I've been journaling for a majority of my life. The first ever diary that I've ever received was back in grade three and it was like this little itty bitty sponge bob like notebook that i received as a party favor maybe had 30 pages max but that was the first time that i ever really got experience the fun and kind of writing out my thoughts i knew like growing up i couldn't really confide in anyone that i knew such as like my friends or my parents i think when you're really young there's a lot of strong emotions that you may feel and you don't really know how to grapple with all of them and some of them may be too big and scary and confusing i think it's great that i'm able to kind of look back at the kind of person that i was at like 10 13 15 and see how much I've grown and I think it's really special to have these really tangible things in front of you that serve as like a sentimental piece especially for someone as myself that likes to go through really old like notebooks, photos and things like that to really reminisce how I felt in those moments. Overall journaling has been a very healing experience for me and this video has just been long overdue. I am so so excited to show you guys some of the journals that I have right beside me. So I will be separating these into two categories. Some of them will be my guided journals and the other ones will be my non-guided ones to kind of show you guys a range of options out there depending on the person that you are and hopefully you'll be able to find a fit first I want to start off with my non-guided journals I find that these are my personal favorites because there are no prompts for you to follow there's no activities there's no format it's up to you to figure out how you would like to fill it up whether it be just entirely full of words or you can jazz it up with making it into a little art journal this is my little film slash show journal I recently started this as as a way to show appreciation to my favorite films and just recently I also wanted to put in shows as well just because I started watching a lot of the chef show I've been getting a lot of stickers these days and I wanted to figure out a way to use them and so as you can see I only have a couple of entries in here I think what's really great about this is that if you're someone that's a little bit more on the creative side you can work wonders with an art journal I think having this journal has been a really fun creative outlet where it's not stressful because I know that it's meant for only me I don't have to impress anyone with it and I feel really good about it because it's also like a little capsule to see the things that I've enjoyed throughout the years and will continue to enjoy this um, journal I actually got from the Lavender line I will have everything linked down below as well next is my current journal so recently I filled up one of my brain dump journals my brain dump journal are the ones where I tend to just write in a bunch of stuff. Most of the entries just tend to be words on words on words. I fill up the entire page. I can't really flip through this one just because I have a lot of super personal entries in here, but there's a couple in here where I've just stuck in receipts, old photos, little stickers, and I think one of the funnest ways to go about filling up your journal if you find that you don't have too many things to write about is just just fill it up with mementos cards that you get from restaurants places that you visit with your friends or of course receipts however um, do keep in mind that whenever you preserve receipts and journals they do have a tendency to fade away over time so just something to think about if anyone is wondering where I got this one from I don't even remember because I got it a long time ago but I'm sure that you can find a notebook like this at 
Muji. This is like a pretty popular style. This is from the brand Essentials. I find that this is pretty durable. The pages are thick enough. The quality is amazing. The pages are dotted. I don't like to use the lined ones as much because I find that for aesthetic reasons, I just vibe with the dotted ones a lot more. This one right here, once again, my current brain dump journal. I love that I can just come here whenever I'm feeling upset, really happy, whatever it may be, and I can just write whatever is on my mind. I fill up an entire page. This form of journaling has been kind of like my go-to throughout the years because I find that journaling becomes a very healing thing for me when it's unprompted and I can go about it in the way that I want. That way there's no restrictions, although I do understand that there may be some people that have difficulties in figuring out how to start, what they should write about, especially if they feel like there's not too much going on in their lives, but they still want to make an effort to journal. I've noticed the biggest issue that I've had when it comes to journaling is consistency. Sometimes I will write one entry like once a month and then I'll come back to it like the next month and I find that it's really hard to get into that routine especially if not much is happening. I also want to note that it's okay to write about your kind of everyday routine even just what you had for breakfast, lunch, dinner. When you look back at it like years later it will be interesting to read about even though in the moment you may not think that it's anything too fun or exciting. I guarantee you it will still be fun to read about for years to come. Oh, just because I haven't mentioned it earlier, I got this one from Amazon. On the Canadian Amazon, it is like one of the more affordable bullet journals out there. It also has the little elastic band for you to close it or for you to mark where you're at. It also has this little thing. I don't know what it's called, but they have it. That way you can keep track of what page you're on. First up is the Anti-Anxiety Notebook. This is a notebook that was designed by therapists to help you learn about effective tools to help you better manage your anxiety. It's not meant to replace actual therapy with a licensed professional. This notebook is incredibly informative and it has helped me learn so much about thought patterns. To be honest, before I owned this notebook, I had no idea what thought patterns even were. And so this goes into depth with all of that. They have an appendix that gives you the definition for all of the thought pattern terms and a feelings wheel which has been the most helpful thing ever because sometimes with certain emotions i find that it can be really difficult to actually label on a page because you're not too sure what exactly it is that you're experiencing but then once you see the word in the wheel you start to kind of put it together and then you realize like oh i think this might be the feeling that i am experiencing the page is laid out as follows what happened what is going through your mind what emotions are you feeling what thought patterns do you recognize how can you think about the situation differently? And then what's nice is that there's an open space next to the page of prompts where you can basically do anything that you want doodle, continue to reflect on everything that you've written about over here, really just anything. Let your mind wander, explore. That is a beauty of having a free space like this. This is The Becoming Notebook by Michelle Obama. This is meant to be a companion to her book Becoming. I think that this is a really intentional journal that has really special and interesting prompts that really make me think about things that I've personally never really thought about too much or super in depth before. For example, here are some prompts in the journal. Describe a specific place that holds important meaning to your family. When was your last good cry and how did you feel afterward? How do you look after yourself after you've had a bad day? If you're not able to get her book, that's perfectly fine because all throughout the notebook there are little quotes scattered straight from the actual book itself and these are all really wonderful quotes quotes and it's nice to have them alongside the prompts and everything because it just adds to the overall like inspiring and very motivational effect that this notebook has. Next up is the habit journal. I'm going to be honest I haven't really started using this just because I've been so busy with using the other ones that I've shown before so I can't advocate for this too too much but what I do know is that the intention of this journal is to help you create habits and set clear goals and vision 
patience for yourself. If you find that you lack routine and clear guidance in your life, then this might be the journal for you. It has a bunch of different sections from vision pages, daily reflection, monthly planning, and monthly habit trackers. So all in all, there is quite a lot jam-packed in this little journal. Lastly is the Mad Happy Journal. So I saved this one for last because I feel like it's so cute and colorful, but for those of you that are not familiar with Mad Happy, they are a clothing brand that's centered around creating conversations around mental health. So when I first found out that they they released a limited edition journal I was so so psyched because I absolutely love their aesthetics and just what the whole brand kind of encompasses the spreads for this journal are a lot more simple and emotions based it's a little bit similar to the anti-anxiety one but that one of course goes into way more depth so this one is a lot more beginner friendly what I love about this is that there isn't just one daily set of prompts that they'll use it will rotate between six different ones my favorite thing about about this journal in particular is that throughout the notebook they'll have full spreads just dedicated to these bright and colorful quotes so overall just a really cute and fun journal these are all of the journals that I own and the ones that are not shown are the really old ones that I have from my childhood which are currently just stored away in my basement for supplies, I like to keep it pretty simple. You really don't need anything fancy, but if you do have the means to purchase nice supplies to make your experience more fun, then definitely go for it. These tend to be the ones that I drift towards most often. I keep it pretty small. 70% of the time, I'm really just using a simple black pen to make my entries. If you don't know what to invest in first, I would suggest that you pick a really good black pen because that can make a world of difference. I'm also a huge fan of stickers. I have little books dedicated to keeping my stickers organized. Most of the stickers that I have here are from YesStyle. I find that this is just a nice way to add some color and fun into your pages. Definitely not necessary at all. Growing up, I remember always saving my stickers since my parents couldn't really afford to get me little luxuries like these. So it makes me really happy to know that I can own a whole binder of them and actually use them without fear of thinking I'll never be able to get another sheet. These are also the two printers that I use mainly for my art journal. I personally prefer the Kodak Smile one because the back is already adhesive, so I can just print the photo and slap it into my book. I mainly use it for my art journal. They're really simple to use. I just connect it to my phone, look through my gallery, select the pictures that I want to print. You can edit on the app if you would like, and voila, there it is. I hope that this video was helpful and you were able to gain some inspiration. Hopefully you were able to find one that you feel fits your journaling needs. I'm really, really happy to be sharing all this with you guys. If you have any questions or if you'd like to follow me for more content, feel free to check me out on my social channels. Everything will be linked down below. Love you guys so, so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.